so it's not beginning it's called okay. okay this is uh, from cool fm is also beginning live and uh, fdk tv is also here so they will relate to each other school tv is also going live here okay oh, okay. okay so all right um welcome to the office of district number one representative the honorable francis sakila in your <coughs> office um like all of you may be informed, uh, he was invited by the National He's come to inform the public about what unfolded and moving forward, what next. So at this point, I will give the podium to the Honorable Francis Akilani Martin to proceed with the press conference. Members of the former estate, Liberians and our people in radio lands. Uh, we, on the 15th of March, were hosted by the OKFM. And during the interaction with the journalists in the studio, there were assertions we made that came to the fore to the extent that the CDC led government takes offense and believe that it should amount to some felonial crime or charges. A day after, we were informed by the office of the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives that the National Security Agency of Liberia was in search of us. But through the intervention of the leadership of the House, there was a conclusion that there was an understanding that there will have been a meeting today, a conference today, where I, I shall appear with my lawyers and the authorities of the NDC will have carried out whatever they wanted to. Uh, whether that was going to be informal or formal, We did our consultations, and our consultations were legal, political, and traditional. On political and traditional basis, we yield to the advice that said to us, we can attend a call and refuse what is in the call. And so we came to attend the call. Unfortunately, because of the presence of Lofens in the building, at, or the Capitol building compound, uh, it was determined that our presence, in fact, was political. And so the Deputy Speaker, for some reason, has determined that the NSA has a statutory responsibility to exercise and so they should do what they ought to do and so i was there with three lawyers council of Kluvo, council of fire council of bianhau but the meeting was in hell but we have come back to let our people know, the Liberian people. Firstly, we want to use this occasion to condemn the Aussie attack on the home of justice, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Joseph Nangwe, to condemn the Aussie attack at the National Election Commission to to the highest and strongest term 
We are a civilized society as a country. The national legislature that I'm a member of, a well-constituted, organized, and law-abiding institution, I condemn the action, the also action, <laughs> and we support Nobody that would think that that is the way to go in finding solution. Uh, I do know that there are still five counties. The county of Rivers, the county of Nima, the county of Bapul, the county of Kima, and my own county, Lofa, whose senators have not been somebody election commission somebody supreme court and people may want to exercise I mean to ensure that the constitutional period is respected because within 30 days the national election commission should be able to to get rid of all election matters before them following the announcement of the result thereof. In as much as that is not the case, any attempt to take law in your hand, I'm not in support of it. But let me repeat, this representative stand by his statement on my 15, and we will further interpret that. We will have done it now. But since state security apparatus are getting involved in our political move, we reserve our, the definition of our statement, the, ex, the further explanation of our statement. All can say to the Liberian people, we were elected and brought on board to run a government, not a party, not a political party. When I come to the Capitol building, I don't come to the Capitol building to run the party that I belong to. Even though I'm under obligation to push the line, the aims and aspirations of the Unity Party, now the CPP, when there are crucial national issues for consideration. When there are crucial national issues for consideration, we treat them as leaders of this country, board of politics. But let me re-echo that I am indeed a hope and stand by and ready to face anything called consequences. general. Indeed, I am a general, but I am a very general and I am a rebel general. Nobody in this country and I challenge the media to investigate the trace in any military activity, then that person stand correct. But I have been not yet. I've been prepared today. I am indeed a general, but a military general, and not a military general. 
And because I'm a political general, I will continue to fight for the people of my district, the people of my county, the people of the rural Liberia. And nothing can stop that. I stand ready. If the NSA will feel that this representative has to be arrested, if the government of Liberia feel this representative has to be arrested, uh, but, but let me let me say this. I learned this when we were talking about put back. Abapu said to us, and I quote, a politician has two homes, one comfort home with your family, and one comfort, one uncomfort home in jail. And so, if because of my assertion, if it is misconstrued, if it is misanalyzed, and this government, the executive branch of government, who is under obligation to protect lives and property, will determine that this is felony. I'm prepared to face the consequence. You want me to go to jail, I'll go to jail. If that will end my life, let me let the, this government, the we are like government to understand that there are more than 100 humans around here, just right around here. And you will find thousands of them outside there. And as I said, all of you know what my statement is. It's in the social media, and all of the, our media institutions have my statement. You analyze it and determine what I mean. If that statement is tantamount to war, then I'm ready to face the bullet. But I stand by it. Because what is obtaining in this country is a repeat, a, rep, a direct repeat of those things that happened in the 70s and the 80s, in the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 70s, that led to the coup in 1980. It's a repeat of those things that happened up to, and including 1990, when we faced a bloody war that lasted for 14 years. Today, we are still facing the effect of the war. All of us know the consequence Liberia is facing as a result of the 40 year civil war. Our infrastructure was destroyed. Our children were denied education for 14 years. And that's why you have this kind of situation today. But maybe I need to amplify my statement. For somebody to sit at the executive mansion and you call yourself Minister of State and you determine you are Prime Minister, that in my will we detect the course of action of this country. And we listen to nobody. This is a government that is not prepared to listen to the Council of Churches. They are not prepared to listen to the National Bar Association. They are not prepared to listen to the, the civil society. They are not prepared, you know, they are not prepared to listen to our elders. They have no respect for our former leaders. They do just what they want. It's about time that we face them on. And I'm prepared to do that, to lead that civilly. <coughs> Anybody thinking that our position is we're going to take arm tomorrow morning to go in the bush? No way. No way. We will fight the war with our mouths right here. They will always use the arm. Because no, here after, after this press conference, they could send police after me. And But let me say this. This humanity is only leading the charge. You got thousands out there that are more than the very human who is speaking. So, so I don't care. Miguel and his hooligans could determine today that they got rid of me. Let me go. But this attempt, this is an attempt. Why I am being queried by the National Security Agency? Another Liberian 
who is in our case, the Secretary General of the United Party is being invited by the police. Total nonsense. nonsense. Total nonsense. <laughs> and we're not yield to it. No of us in this struggle has any plans to bring Liberia back to the to dark day to the dark days. If that were the plan, I would not be sitting like here. I will be elsewhere calling BBC to determine what the operation is. But we will face them face on and head on in the city. I'm going nowhere. I have no plans for anything called rebel operation. Maybe if their understanding of rebel operation is because normally we speak what the wrong is, you might will speak what the right is. If that is rebel operation, I'm proud to be this rebel. But those claiming that you is a rebel general, I am a general, but a political general. And we stay in this struggle. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you. And we'll take a few questions. All right, okay. <coughs> All right, I want to take five questions. Yes, call your institution for you to see. Oh, I want to make it for you, Mali. Good afternoon again. My name is Serana George, and I report for cable TV. Uh, I'm not concerned when you say that uh, you have no regret for whatever you say. So, uh, do, you, do you actually mean that uh, your statement was intentional? Honorable journalists, whatever I say, you can defend it. The first one has to do with you talk about your political and traditional constitution. Would you mind to follow and uh, make it explicit with what you meant by your traditional and political constitution? One, two. Of recent, the team from Lofa County, particularly with the Bernie Samoka saga, uh, remember they said that there will be unspecified political action with the legs of the NEC uh, petrol bomb saga and the residents at uh, Justice Nangwe. Don't you think that the unspecified political is, action... Is Aussie a political action? No, Mr. Jonas. It's not a political action. It was unspecified. So you're pro by the unspecified NSA... Unspecified political action. Political actions are not criminal actions. So even the CPP press statement tells you that there will be <laughs> unspecified political actions. They didn't tell you criminal actions. When you carry out Aussie, it's criminal. And you're arrested. <laughs> but let me tell you, the act, that, that Aussie action could be very flanzamiton, I mean, flanzamitonic. We know what happened here during the old days when flanzamiton were used. To have had a purported coup, coup d'etat only because Samedo and his cohorts wanted to get a certain people. That could be the situation. And so we call it on the security forces of our land to leave no stone unturned to investigate. And, and they will have to brave the storm if this is a government organization. Who 
about the hooligans and you also talk about uh, the, the security forces because this could be a, a quote unquote transamitonization of the process. So, uh, uh, and yet you're calling on the security to investigate, break the storm. Do you trust this very security who are also quote unquote that's why we are the hooligans of? Minister that, that's what we have. Yeah, they didn't tell you that the security forces were the hooligans. Who are the hooligans, sir? You ask Maguire, he will tell you. Okay. But, we, we, but, we do, but we do know that. But we do know that. Natalia Maguire command a force, a militia force called the Punkepan okay. Brigade. <laughs> Those are hooligans. Thank you. And and because you have hooligans, that Natalia McGill himself is chem, is head of is leader of a hooligan organization. Thank you, sir. That's Thank hooliganism. You. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you sir. sir. And, uh, and so that's the end of this press conference. We've been in conversation okay. with okay. Representative okay. Yomada on this year one. Uh, no far count pressure was just been released from. Um, uh, interrogation from the NSA.